Hi there, welcome to my channel. So it's been a little over a month since I unboxed and got the new iMac 27 inch mid 2020 model, the one that came out on August 4th up and running. But I'm using the FaceTime HD camera to record this portion of the video. But I've mentioned this in my original unboxing video and a few more times in my other iMac videos, but I am a lifelong PC user and transitioning to a Mac was something that I've always been a bit apprehensive about. With that said though, I've always known the benefits in productivity that a Mac brings, especially for people who enjoy content creation, like this guy right here. So that's why I initially took that leap and got the newest iMac. To add on, I've made a little series of videos called Mac Noob Learns, and these videos basically go over neat little tricks that I discover and learn, as well as some experiments while I teach myself how to use the Mac operating system. So this video, this video right here is dedicated to keyboard shortcuts, specifically shortcuts that I use on a daily basis to make my Mac OS experience a bit easier, as well as the shortcuts that contribute to my content creation. So let's get started and I'll start screen recording on the iMac as well as do a little picture in picture to get an overhead view of this keyboard. So I'm just gonna get something open like pages real quick. So first off, this is probably the biggest noob thing that I'll probably say, but it took forever for me to get used to pressing the command key for basic keyboard shortcuts. For me, it's a bit distracting that the Mac keyboard has a control key as well too, because on Windows devices, control is essentially the command key for keyboard shortcuts, such as cut, copy, and paste. So on Macs, it's command X for cut, command V for paste, command C to copy, and I'll just paste it again just to show it off. So that was copied. So that's essentially just the control X, control C, control V on Windows. It's just change the command, command X, C, and V. Just to get a few more basic shortcuts out of the way, command A is for select all. Let's just cut that. Command Z is for undo, so that's there. And then command P is to print. Learning that command is control on Windows is something that I had to get used to. But in addition to those basic shortcuts, I want to go over eight more that I've learned over the course of this past month that I use on a daily basis. So first off is something that I mainly use for on iMessages and YouTube comments for when I want to see more personable or to liven up a response here and there. And this shortcut is to open and use emojis. It's really simple. All you do is press control, command, and the space bar. And then this whole little emoji window will pop up and you can use whatever emoji you want to use. And that's how I get emojis in my text conversations and YouTube comments and wherever else I need them. One more time. That's how simple it is. Control, command, and spacebar. So the next set of shortcuts that I want to show off involve the function keys right here. So F1 through F12. So out of these function keys, for me, the two most important sets include brightness, I'm not sure if it's getting brighter on the actual screen recording, but brightness and volume. But did you know there's actually a more precise way to adjust this? So instead of having one full bar go up, there's actually a way to increase the bar by 25% each. So rather than one whole bar, it'll just go up by a little portion. So if you want more precise controls while adjusting the screen brightness or volume, all you have to do is press option plus shift and the FN key that you want to focus on. And this allows finer adjustments to those full bars. So here's volume going up one full bar, okay? So now if you press Option plus Shift, here's volume. You can see the bar going up by about a quarter each time. So the same can be done with the brightness of the screen. So Option, Shift, and we're going to go over here, F2, F1, without pressing it with pressing Option and Shift, going up by about 25% each. So anyway, moving on from that little fun key combo right there, the most useful keyboard shortcuts for me have to deal with screen captures. So a basic screenshot is Shift, Command, and 3. That one will just take a whole screenshot of the whole entire window. So let me click that. There it is. There's Taiga right there. Anyway, done with that. But for those who didn't know, you can actually press shift command and four and it'll turn your little mouse cursor. There it is into a little crosshair. You can actually select a portion of the screen to take a screen capture of. So if I wanted to be more precise and get Taiga's eye, I would click and drag over her eye and it'll take a screenshot of her eye. 
And there it is. So out of all these screen capture options, my favorite has to be shift command and five. So I'm actually in the middle of a screen recording right now. So you can see that it says stop screen recording right here, but it's currently on capture selected portion. So when I'm not on the screen recording, there's two options right here that allows you to screen record the whole entire screen or portion of the screen. So where that stop button is, that's usually where that is. And as soon as you press that, this capture button says record instead, and that's how you do a whole screen recording. But all those options with shift command three, shift command four are essentially right here. So capture entire screen, capture selected window, capture selected portion. And then when this isn't screen recording, this turns into recording options right here. And I don't want to turn it off right now, but I'll probably just get a little screenshot of what that actually looks like when I'm not actually screen recording. So let me just close this out. And I use so many of these screen capture options for a lot of my videos. So I'm actually going to move the keyboard back down here. And lastly, kind of like the whole control X, control C, control V turns to command X, C and V on Mac. One thing that I miss dearly is to use alt plus F4 on windows to close things out. But if you need to do this on a Mac, I'm just going to open two tabs right here. So the same thing can be done if you just press command and W. So that closes out the most frontward tab. So that second tab that I opened was the one that was active. So let's just say I open a bunch of more tabs here. If you want to close out every single one of these tabs, all you have to press is option, command and W and it closes out all the tabs. So everything is gone up here. It's just that last tab that I actually had open. So lastly, if you want to force quit an app, you would press control alt delete on windows. So on Mac, it's actually option command plus escape. And that's how you're going to force quit applications. So I have mail messages, pages, QuickTime player, Safari and finder open. So all you do is click the one you want to force quit or even relaunch. And that's how you force quick applications. It's just option command and escape. Pretty simple. And if you're a lifelong PC user like myself, these are little things that you just have to get acclimated with over time, switching to a new operating system. So these are the keyboard shortcuts that I pretty much use on a daily basis. And as I get more familiar with my new iMac and the whole Mac OS, I'm sure that there'll be more shortcuts for myself to discover. And I'll make sure to share those with you all, at least the ones that I think that are more interesting. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for spending a bit of time with me today. So if you like this video or found it interesting in some way, shape or form, make sure to check out these other videos. And if you really did enjoy hanging out with me today, consider subscribing to be the first to know when I upload something new. Other than that, I'll see you all soon. Stay safe out there.